Big questions this afternoon about stimulus. As millions of Americans look to Congress and wonder what went wrong. But we're refocused, we're determined, we're positive, and we're going to get through it. There's a new, renewed sense of optimism from viewers of this channel because, guess what? <laughs> Wall Street's having a problem with Nancy Pelosi as well. Everyone's having a problem with Nancy Pelosi as well. Nancy Pelosi did not accept $1.9 trillion. She was offered $1.9. She wanted $2.2. And guess what? Everything's going to crap. <laughs> and it's all Nancy Pelosi's fault. It's a renewed optimism because suddenly the push, push, push of this channel is having push, push, push behind us. We're getting to the finish line. The question is how soon. And this is a great afternoon of purple. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. I'm here, you're here, and I'm glad that you're joining me on the second video of Afternoons LLA. I know the first one was a little bit push, push, pushy, because I had to go over what's going on on the lockdowns. There's nothing, there's no way to spin a lockdown. It's just a little scary. But in this video, I'm going to reassure you that what's incredible great news is that the moto, the moto, <laughs> The motto, the focus, the push of this channel is now becoming front page news across broadcast news as they now realize that Nancy Pelosi's inability to accept a decent stimulus offer from Steve Mnuchin could cause real problems with this American economy and that it was a bad strategic decision and ultimately can hurt the Democratic Party in seven days from now, less than seven days from now. Wow. But a big twist, big twist, big turns. Go to the phone channel, subscribe. Because together, we're pushing the envelope. We're helping other people understand the situation, whether they're broadcast news reporters or they're just the people next door. Also, like this video. It's really helping the algorithm. You're helping the video appear higher in the algorithm. Make sure you hit the alert at the front of this channel so you get alert when a new video goes live. In this video, Purple, I will be going over why Wall Street why the country is now looking to Nancy Pelosi and saying, okay, you did this because you wanted Biden to win, but if Biden wins, then where is the next path? Because no one under your scheme will have stimulus until the cows come home. And they're not coming home. They're going to the casino. So what's going to go on? Uh, meantime, Donald Trump is capitalizing on that, saying, you know what? Don't vote for her, and I don't even think the House is going to stay Democratic because she doesn't want you to have stimulus. She wants to hold out relief to Americans to get her candidate into the presidency. It's a good message. The question is whether he's going to push the message loud and clear. In this video, I'm going to go over the issue of first, second, and third stimulus. I'm going to go over lockdown stimulus. I'm going to go over front lines, salaries, protests, civil unrest, and why Nancy's bet fell apart. Let's get to the breaking news. The breaking news is that as we sit here in late October, Halloween's just around the corner, we should be talking not about second stimulus. We should be talking about third stimulus because we all knew, this is no surprise, that there would be lockdowns in the winter. I mean, we've been talking about this for months. We all knew this was going to happen. And as lockdowns come, guess what else should be coming? The stimulus checks for those lockdowns. Stimulus checks on those lockdowns, rent assistance for those lockdowns, rent eviction moratoriums, hazard pay, FPUC, all these things should be set up ahead of time for when the lockdown comes. What's important to understand is that Congress has been playing this catch-up game since March, but this time, there's no excuse. When the pandemic hit in February, and by March we certainly saw it existed, there was a catch-up game from Congress. Now, at that point, we could certainly give Congress the benefit of the doubt, say, okay, this thing, this pandemic hit really hard, and you're trying to catch up. And so they passed a the first stimulus package to cover what, at that time, they understood the stimulus, the pandemic to be. Well, guess what? That approach is not getting even the smell test now in America. 
Why? Because everyone has told Congress that there's going to be a second wave of this pandemic in the winter, that there's going to be new lockdowns, that there's going to be business shutters, that there's going to be need to give money for my SSDI, SSI, and Social Security Railroad Benefits viewers. There's going to be net money needed to be given to hazard paid employees, frontline workers, and that you need to prepare for that ahead of time. We all know how many weeks it takes for a bill to become a law. We all know how many days it takes to write a bill. We all know how many days it takes to prove a bill. Guess what? It is truly, shockingly, horribly disgusting to say that I'm sitting here today and not one member of Congress has written a third stimulus package. No one has written a stimulus package to prepare for the pandemic's new lockdowns being anticipated for the winter months into the new year. The second stimulus package, as you know, we talk about on a daily basis, really almost expires in late December or January. Eviction moratoriums expire in late December. Uh, mortgage forbearance expires in late December. Student loan debt repayment expires in late December. Rent aid uh, expires in late December. And then the that's the existing provisions. Then the ones that an FPC, uh, PUA, all those things from the CARES Act 1 expire in late December. Then everything, that's all CARES Act 1 stuff. Then CARES Act 2 stuff, the proposals of the second stimulus package, even what they wrote in the second stimulus package proposals, they're still expiring in December, January. Okay, uh, hello, uh, we're in October. Hello, Earth to Mars, we're in October. Knock, knock, is anyone in Nancy Pelosi's hair, head? Hair, well, there's nothing in the hair. But is anything in the head? Uh, hello, you need to be starting to write bills and getting them to a vote for what's going on in November, December, and January because it takes weeks to get it done. This is the problem. The problem, as we sit here today, is that Congress is a bunch of lazy mofos and is really showing how absolutely, totally incompetent they are from head to toe and left to right. Let me explain what's going on. You see a pandemic coming and you see lockdowns ensuing, whether it's El Paso or Chicago, across the country. They're Republican, they're Democrat. There's just lockdowns coming all across the board. You need to have the bill in place and the programs in place weeks ahead of time because you can't just send out the check the next day. One of the most common questions I get from viewers is, am I getting the check tomorrow? No. What happens with a lot of these programs, whether it's hazard pay, whether it's stimulus checks, whether it's FPC, is you first have to have the bill written. Then you have to have the bill voted on. Then you have to have the bill approved. Okay, that takes several weeks. Then you have to have the program established that was just created in the law. An example is the rent aid of the second stimulus package. There's a rent program under the second stimulus package. Have you seen it? No, it hasn't been established because the law hasn't been, hasn't been approved. When it becomes a law, they have to go establish these agencies that administer this stimulus relief. That takes more weeks. Then, <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm, not even, I'm not even, how many weeks are we into this now? Six weeks? Then you have to apply to these agencies to get the relief. They don't just send out money. It's not, you know, in case of stimulus checks, they do. But rent aid, you have to apply to them to get the rent. You have to apply to get the food. You have to apply to get the FPC. And that takes more weeks. And then finally, you get the money. How many weeks are we talking about here, LLA? I would say it's at least 8 to 12 weeks. Yeah. So as we sit here, where is Congress preparing us for the winter months of the third stimulus package? Where is Congress doing anything to prepare for the third stimulus package? Zero. What Congress did yesterday, what Congress did the day before, was the following. On Monday, the Republicans had a subcommittee of the Senate meet and confirm Judge Barrett. Okay, they didn't work on your stimulus. Uh, uh, yesterday, the Democrats had a subcommittee meet, and they had it again today, to talk about slapping the hands of Google and Facebook over regulations and online speech. Okay, where was the work on stimulus? Nothing. They're doing everything but stimulus. And this is the pressing issue. What's important to understand is that the third stimulus is right coming around the corner.
The second stimulus you're owed, and the first stimulus you're owed. I every single video will undoubtedly have someone say. Why are you talking about third stimulus? I haven't gotten my second stimulus check. Why are you talking about second stimulus? I haven't gotten my first stimulus check. Why? <laughs> because ultimately, what Congress wants you to do is forget money that you're owed. Uh, let me go over how much money you're owed. The first stimulus package for checks was March to May. Second stimulus package for checks is covering May to the present. Third stimulus package for checks the present to the future. Of that entire period, guess how many checks that they want to give you? Either one or two. Hello? And guess what they want to do? They want to put the second check from the, they want to put the first check that you were owed on the first stimulus package in the second one, and they want to put the second one into the third one. So that ultimately, by the time you're done with the three packages, you look back and like, um, what happened to all my checks? Oh, we just sort of, you know, we just sort of slopped together like a like a nice jambalaya. Uh, excuse me? Let's go over hazard pay. Hazard pay starts in January, goes up through the first stimulus package. Did you get it? No. Second stimulus package, did you get it? No. Third stimulus package is going to be in there? Oh, no. They keep on putting in, taking out, putting in, taking out, putting in, taking out. So ultimately, as the frontline workers are asked to go into the grocery stores and start working as the pandemic roars on, is there hazard pay for them? No. These people put it in and take it out, put it in and take it out. And all they do is have the audacity to talk about how we're working for the frontline workers. We're working for uh, grocery stores. We're working for the people who are essential workers. No, you're not. You're not giving them a penny. What, what, is, this, what is this fake narrative you're doing? You're not giving them a penny. Next, FPUC. FPUC went from March... And everything about FPUC, which I, I apologize, I don't often talk about everything with FPUC, like PUA and UI and, and FPEUC. That was from March to July expired. Well, in the case of FPUC expired. Then that's the first stimulus package. Second stimulus package. It's supposed to go September. So you're losing a month. You're losing the month of August. Yeah, isn't that cute? Uh, September to January. Okay, what, af what happens after January? Third stimulus package. What's important to understand is that the three dozen states are now reporting the average number of people hospitalized in COVID-19, raising by 5% in the last week. So is Congress trying to do anything to prepare for that? No. We are at another critical point in the pandemic response, says Administrator Brett Girard, Assistant Secretary of Health, who leads the government's testing effort. We can control the virus, but we're at record number of cases. 73,000 cases on Tuesday, bringing the seven-day average of cases to 71,000, which is a new record for seven-day cases, up 20% from a week ago. Three dozen states are, are surging. Cases are up at least that amount in 45 states. As the nation did after a Memorial Day, we're at another critical state in the pandemic response. Cases are going into most states across the country. Hospitalizations are up, although we still see tens of thousands of hospitalizations below where we were in July. But that's rising, and we're starting to see the increases in deaths. What's important to understand is that Nancy Pelosi does not understand that crushing the virus involves also financially crushing the virus. She talks about contract tracing and tracing and testing, money for testing, and money for schools. And, hello. <laughs> people have no jobs. People are going to be on lockdown. People are going to be laid off. People aren't going to be able to reach their place of work. People aren't going to be able to make rent. People aren't going to have utilities. People need a stimulus check. People, uh, people are going to see cost of living going up. Where is the stimulus? What's important to understand is the Democrats may get fried, we don't know, on election night because of Nancy Pelosi's path has fallen apart. Nancy Pelosi had a big bet, and her big bet was a one path. And let me explain that one path. Her path was that the Senate would go Democratic, the presidency would go Democratic, and that she could just wait and do your do this, you know, $3.4 trillion or $2.2 trillion stimulus bill next year. The very first time I heard this, I said to you, our economy won't last next year that way. You can't do that. Now, if you've been with me for a while, which I presume you have, in July, when Congress was coming back from that vacation and your FPUC expired, I said, you know what? We're at a financial cliff. Get this stimulus, get this stimulus passed for the second stimulus now. They didn't.
Guess which financial cliff you're at now. You're at the financial cliff after the financial cliff. You're, you know, you're basically crashed over the financial cliff, and now you're sort of, you know, I, I, <laughs> I don't know what goes after a cliff. It's a cliff after a cliff, and the Democrats think that we can just hold off and not give any more stimulus. Now, certainly the Republicans are blamed as well. Mitch McConnell has never given you a decent stimulus package. Steve Mnuchin has been dragging, kicking, and fighting to do decent stimulus numbers for a very long time. Larry Kudlow has, you know, said the economy will do fine without stimulus. Oh, no, that's just not true, Larry. Sorry. Uh, and then there's Pete Navarro, who's in the president's White House team, that said, you know what, just settle the thing. Just meet in a half a waypoint. Just send out the money. We need the money. What are you doing? He's the only one that seems to make sense in this whole group. Uh... And then there's Chuck Schumer who says, oh, no, we're not going to send out stimulus checks. we got to give money to Gavin Newsom and Andrew Cuomo. Oh, no, we're not going to send out um, FPC as a standalone bill. We need to give money to Andrew Cuomo and Gavin Newsom. Well, that's not going to work, Chucky, because apparently the economy can't support it. Uh, and now, the co with the COVID-19 cases out of control, all of Nancy Pelosi's talk is not working her benefit. What Nancy Pelosi should have done is she should have taken the $1.8 trillion deal offer. She should have then uh, gone back, drafted a third stimulus package, got it ready for Biden if he's going to come in as the next president, and got that ready. Her holding up the second one to get Biden in when he was already headed in the polls was a bad strategic error. It's bad for everything. It's bad for the economy. It's bad for millions of Americans and their, their, in their livelihood. It's bad for her party. It's just bad across the board. Trump, on the other hand, should have, uh, uh, should have prepared accordingly. He should have been a, he should have gotten the GOP and the Senate to come up. He did not. Rather, what he did was he never consulted really with anyone in the GOP and just had Steve Mnuchin do it on his own accord. And by doing it on his own accord, no one in the Senate was really teared up with the president. And so ultimately, the president could have had a fighting chance in these polls. And again, polls are wrong against Biden. Had he shown, I'm beating the virus with the economy. Now, as you look at it, and Wall Street looks at it. The president's not being in the economy, being the virus with the economy. He's behind the eight ball. There's no stimulus relief. There's no executive order. There's no third stimulus. And millions of Americans are wondering, why has the president not gotten it done? Uh, if you have questions or comments of today's video, drop them in the comments below. Let me go over some of the incredible questions and comments from yesterday's video. Carrie, start thumbing Nancy, not your highway anymore. I love that. Ricky, the government should all be fired. Steve, stimulus is needed right now. Brandy, how does a government shut down, close people's jobs, people lose their businesses, and then they won't help the people survive? The government's sickening. Amen. They want to put you on lockdown by not but give you a stimulus check? Jazz, just Jasmine. They're all playing games, but it's not fair. Nancy, are you happy? You caused this. I know that people haven't gotten a stimulus check as well. Nancy does not care about the people. It's a deflection with her. James Parley, I see Nancy's begging for money from Bloomberg, kind of like we're all pleading for our money. How does it feel like not getting your money, Nancy? Oh, I love that. Sally Preto, good evening, LA and the Purple Power family. Stafford, thank you for all your updates, and you do not go unnoticed. You are so dedicated to the fight. Stafford Trends, I love that. Thank you so much. Uh, Anita, good evening. My blessings to everyone. Good luck. Let's do this, Purple Power. Pray, pray, pray. Pat Carter and Teresa Soros. Bonnie Wallace uh, and Teresa Sawyers. Um, Colleen Evans, prayers and positive vibes for the Purple Power family. Good evening from upstate New York. Hello, good evening. Wes Allen, Nancy, no more excuses. Get the checks out. Jeremy Swanett, we can demand all we want. Doesn't mean they'll do what they want. Yes, but ultimately, they respond to us. Isn't that the benefit? <laughs> Isn't that the nice virtue of an elected official? If they're not elected, if they don't give us what we need. Go to the Fun Channel, subscribe, because together we're going to get through this together. It's a tough, confusing day of a lot of strange twists and turns. And let's pray for the people of France with their new lockdowns announced for their state, for their country. Also like this video. Coming up next is McConnell versus Trump and Pelosi versus Mnuchin. Stay tuned for both broadcasts. Those will be jaw droppers. As always, stay informed, stay smiling, and stay in that life for more. Thank you.